So uh, our next speaker is uh, Christophe Tessieu from the Almax Easy Lab. They're one of the producers of the uh, high pressure equipment, including diamond anvil cells. So Christophe, please take it away. Excuse me. So first I want to, to thank um, Pierre for uh, inviting me and having contacted me a few weeks ago to provide me with this opportunity to, to present some of our products which are used for X-ray applications and uh, experiments. Uh, the past 18 months, of course, we as scientists, be it in, in companies or in academia, had to get used to these uh, virtual meetings and exchanges uh, with the current situation. And we just all hope that uh, next year we'll bring back the, the conferences, uh, the poster session and coffee breaks, and, and fruitful discussions and exchanges between us, companies, and, and new scientists. In any case, well done to, to Riga to set up this event. Uh, I, I think this is a great idea. Uh, so my name is Christophe Tessieu and I'm one of the directors uh, and founder of uh, Almax Easy Lab. My background in high pressure is more in its application at, at low temperature for the study of uh, magnetic and, and superconducting systems um, back in the days, as one says. So I will not pretend to be an expert in uh, X-ray diffraction, uh, far from it. In preparing this talk, I try to work on my brief and put myself in the shoes of, of a scientist having a good experience of X-ray diffraction in the lab and wondering if high pressure could be an interesting uh, extension for his or her measurements. So in no case it is meant to be a talk for experts in high pressure, neither will I cover the topic of, of tag preparation uh, as uh, James Walsh uh, did so very eloquently and comprehensively yesterday. So the storyline of my talk will be as follow. First, who we are as a company. Why would one need high pressure? What are the basics to know about high pressure? What does one need to start with high pressure? Then what is specific about X-ray and high pressure? Then importantly for us, which type of diamond anvil cells are available? And if time allows, uh, some Q&A. Our company is based in uh, Belgium. Uh, and the top two pictures show our facilities from the outside on the right hand side and, and from the inside of the factory. Particularly like the inside of the factory, uh, where this is our assembly and, and test lab. And uh, it's really where we want our technicians and application scientists to find some of the lab atmospheres to foster the spirit of, of curiosity, experimenting, and also developing. Our company revolves around two main activities, uh, the diamond team and the instrumentation team. The overlap is naturally big uh, in the context of, of diamond anvil cells and the design of diamond anvil cells. The diamond team covers uh, diamond anvils and single crystal diamond polishing services, uh, covering a wide range of applications such as dynamic high pressure experiments, uh, high pressure shock uh, experiments, synchrotron, X-ray windows, and more lately diamond detectors and, and quantum sensing. On the other hand, the instrumentation teams cover any instrumentation revolving around the design and manufacturing of uh, pressure cells. Uh, so it's wide ranging. It goes from piston cylinders, uh, diamond anvil cells, but also some uh, more exotic gas cells, as well as the equipment related to high pressure, such as optical devices to measure pressure, uh, EDM drilling machine to prepare the gasket as well. We also provide a wide range of accessories to work with high pressures at low room and high temperatures. And James Walsh uh, touched a bit on the different tooling you might consider. This complementarity really enables us to, to design diamond anvil cell really specific to, to, to give an application. As often, the, the design of a diamond anvil cell starts from, from the diamond itself uh, and then the supporting seed geometry dictated by um, certain constraints, certain uh, for example, like collection angle, space, and, and dimension constraint that uh, a device might have. We can then design the diamond anvil cell according, accordingly and, and make some tests with various uh, diamond anvil geometry. The fact that we can do that in ours is a big, big advantage. Finally, we also have some offices in, uh, in the USA, in Cambridge, and uh, in China, in, in, in Beijing. So as I touched upon, uh, we covered a very wide range of, of measurements and applications from optical, magnetic measurement, electrical transport, and of course, for the purpose of today, some X-ray measurements. For all these applications, we have a, a very wide range of uh, pressure cells, um, 
We also work with some cryogenic partners, such as uh, Janice Lakeshore, to combine with high pressure and low temperature, because they are really the experts of, of low temperature equipment. And so we've got a very close relationship um, with Janice. So, why would we need high pressure? Well, high pressure is a, is a thermodynamic parameter which is widely used these days to tune the electrical, electronic, magnetic, or, or, or structural properties of materials. It has been acknowledged uh, by scientists uh, as key is a key technique to have in the lab, a little difficult one, is the same way as temperature and magnetic fields, which are, are more common. This slide uh, provides a non-exhaustive uh, list of typical phenomena uh, that can be studied uh, with pressure. One of the uh, big changes is effectively five or 10 years ago, uh, maybe 99% of the experiments above 10 GPA were performed at uh, synchrotrons. Uh, but in the past few years, the X-ray diffractometer companies, Rigaku and, and such like, have really gone bounds and leaps to provide better sources, uh, better condensers, and in particular, better detectors and cameras. And as Pierre showed, also software development to work with um, high pressure cell. So all this combined makes it uh, more attractive to own uh, your own pressure cell for your own diffractometer. This enables you to make many structural studies to be done upfront in your lab in the comfort of your own equipment before eventually requesting uh, beam time to go to higher flux and, and more sensitive measurements. So need for high pressure, um, high pressure uh, X-ray crystallographic studies of uh, atomic structure involves typically three principal compression mechanism in solids. One is bond compression, or the shortening of uh, interatomic distances, bond angle bending, or bending uh, of bond angle by high pressure, by compression, and of course intermolecular compression, or the reduction of the interspace between molecules. So in terms of high pressure basics to bear in mind, I will cover again some of the things which have been touched upon uh, yesterday. Um, but I think it's worthwhile. Let's have a look at, at some basic high pressure uh, principles. So the principle of a diamond anvil cell is presented in, in the figure on, on the left hand side of, of this slide. And, and, and by applying a certain amount of force on the back of a diamond anvil, which we call in our jargon the table, one can amplify the pressure generated at the tip or the culet, the flat part of the diamond. In between is sandwiched uh, a gasket, which we call a gasket, between these two inverted diamonds. Uh, a hole is, uh, is drilled in the middle, and the hole is really the pressure chamber where the sample to study is located alongside a pressure transmitting medium, be it solid, liquid, or, or gaseous. And often a pressure marker, such as a small piece of uh, ruby. We can also see uh, that in the, in the close-up views uh, A, uh, alongside a, a section, a cross-section of, uh, of the gasket. The diamond anvil cell itself is a device which will create the force at the back of the diamond, of the table. There are different types of uh, pressure mechanisms, uh, and I will come back onto this uh, later. Uh, it's very important to acknowledge and realize that uh, the sample volumes are, are very small when we work with uh, diamond and cell. It is not rare that uh, I have preliminary discussion with prospective uh, customers, during which I have to dispel a bit the expectations between very high pressure and large sample volume. Compromise needs to be, to be made here. The table below gives you some, some typical values and, and relation between the culet size, the maximum pressure, the sample chamber diameter, and the sample chamber thickness. So if we take the example of a diamond having a culet size, that is again the flat part of the top of the diamond, of one millimeter, we can generate typically pressure of up to 10 GPM. In turn, the sample chamber diameter is around 350 micron and the thickness of around 150 micron for the gasket. It is important again to notice that uh, these values are, are only indicative and they depend on, on few parameters such as uh, the pressure transmitting medium which is uh, used, the material of the gasket, its preparation, and also the type of sample that uh, is going to be used. As we go down the table, we can see that maximum pressure increases 
with smaller surfaces. But accordingly, we quickly reached some of uh, some very small hole diameter. And it's something which is important to keep in mind when using an X-ray diffractometer with a given beam diameter. And I want again to refer to one of the slides presented by uh, Pierre yesterday about uh, full width at uh, half maximum of, uh, of uh, beams on the X-ray diffractometer. So for, for many years, um, the, the supporting seats used in diamond and wheel cells were made uh, conventionally in beryllium with a very small diffraction aperture. The rest of this was uh, made of just a solid metallic part. This had the disadvantage of, of generating some diffraction patterns, which materialize in, in rings in the X-ray image uh, as seen on the top right picture. However, in 2004, uh, a design seat change was done through a, a technical collaboration between our company, Almax, and Dr. Reini Buller. Uh, an original design of so-called conical anvil supported like a, a, an arch by a tanks and carbide seat was developed and, and introduced to the market. This uh, new design meant that now it was possible to have a, a large aperture of typically 80 to 85 degrees without the interference of the supporting seat. Uh, this was, of course, particularly uh, interesting for extra application. This design, as it was uh, mentioned yesterday, is now widely accepted and used by uh, in our company, but also by uh, other companies uh, in the industry. They are often called uh, the conical anvils, but uh, we prefer to call them proudly uh, internally the, the Buller Almax anvils. So more high pressure basics. Um, Although diamond remains the, the hardest material on earth, it is important to highlight to new users that particular precaution must be taken when we use a diamond wheel cell. However, this should not be scaring you with this application, far from it. Uh, having said that, I have to confess that it's always a heartbreaking experience to hear this crystalline sound of a diamond breaking. This happens fortunately only rarely, particularly when the, the correct steps are, are followed during the preparation of a DAC. And again, I, I refer you back to the good presentation of uh, James uh, Walsh of yesterday. The main reason for diamonds to break uh, is misalignment causing the failure. So we really need to be checking translation and tilt alignments before every new setting up of the cell. That's absolutely paramount. The schematic on the left hand side shows typical lateral misalignment. On the picture on the left, we can see that the two culettes are not concentric. And then on the right, after manipulation, after alignment, we can see a line, an aligned pair of anvils. The schematic on the right hand side shows the, the tilt uh, alignment. So we start with the misaligned anvils, that is where the two culettes are not uh, parallel. And that will uh, display some uh, interference, what we call interference fringes as opposed to what we see on the right hand side, a clear surface when the diamonds are perfectly aligned. 95% of our diamond and wheel cells at Almax Easy Labs are designed with mechanism enabling both the lateral and the tilt alignments. This is also widely explained in details in the user guide of each product. So a very important point to bear in mind when new to high pressure and the use of diamond and wheel cell is that you will need some ancillary equipment to complete your, your setup. So I will pass quickly on this slide, but I want to reinforce the point that it is critical to have gaskets which are well drilled in terms of hole quality and accuracy of, uh, of centering. And again, uh, during the presentation yesterday, there was a question about gasket thickness and, and things like that. It's absolutely essential to have these parameters uh, spot on. Poor quality hole will lead to low pressure increase and potentially diamond failure. The method commonly used uh, is EDM drilling, which is an electro erosion of the gasket. And an example is shown in the picture on the right hand side with our Buller micro driller. Such equipment can be expensive, if not sometimes more than the diamond drill cell itself. So for a beginner, I often recommend our gasket drilling service to a new customer, which gives 10 or 20 gaskets, which are already prepared for the experiments. It's cheaper, and so it allows you to get a start with the, with the experiment. Another important aspect in the measurements 
is not only pressure generation, but also the in situ pressure measurement. You cannot estimate precisely the sample pressure only based on the culate size and the applied force in the cell. So a well-established technique is the optical pressure measurement based on the fluorescence of a piece of ruby. Uh, the graphs on this slide show the, the double peak fluorescence of ruby and its shift on the right-hand side of 10 GPA with pressure. It is important to realize that in order to carry out such measurements, we need to have an optical uh, setup. There are some examples and you can consult our website uh, and look for examples namely the Optiprex PLS photoluminescent systems and the compact Optiprex Ruby Lux, which you will see some picture later on. An alternative method for crystallographers is also to use some elements with a known equation of state in which the unit cell varies as a function of pressure. Such examples can be uh, sodium chloride uh, or magnesium oxide. So in summary, what do you need to have to start with a high pressure experiment? I think this, quite, uh, this uh, slide is quite useful to give you a, a summary of your view of the requirement for, for a high pressure lab. So you will need a, a diamond anvil cell with its two diamonds. Depending on the pressure mechanism of the cell uh, used to generate the force on the diamond anvils, a press, a gas controller, or simply some allen keys uh, when uh, used with screws. A boiler micro driller, as mentioned earlier, or alternatively some pre-prepared gasket from our company. I need also some spare gasket, just blank for future experiments. You might want to consider also a few accessories which are quite useful and not necessarily very pricey, uh, such as, for example, a gasket indenter, which is like a, a small pressure cell, enabling the pre-indentation of gaskets without the risk of breaking the diamonds and veal from your cell. A gasket thickness micrometer to check the thickness of the indentation, as it is very important, as we have seen in, in the table I, I showed before about the thickness. Um, some ruby, and eventually, if you can, to have an optical system to measure the pressure depending on your, on your budget. In the lab, you should have a, a good stereo microscope, this is very important, with a long working distance and magnifications typically between 10 or, or 20 times. Some fine uh, tooling for sample loading, such as tweezers and fine needles. All of these are also available uh, at our company at Almax Easy Lab. Another very useful ingredient when you start is to have a good connection with the lab, which already has some experience with high pressure, or even better, to find a postdoc starting in your lab with uh, just experience. It's going to uh, get you through the learning curve much quicker. However, do not despair if you are still keen to get started. We can also provide some uh, on-site commissioning and training on the Diamond and Wilson. With uh, such sessions, one of our application scientists will cover with you topics such as um, dark handling and anvil alignment, gasket preparation, indentation and drilling, uh, sample loading and pressure generations. We'll also look at some basics and very importantly, some tips and tricks of using diamond and research based on, on many, many years of, of experience. So let's move on to the specifics of X-ray and high pressure. One can simplify the, the different geometries possible in, in DAX as, as shown on this, uh, on this slide. The most frequent one, uh, which we've seen a lot so far, is the one which is its transmission or axial mode, in which the incident beam comes on one side uh, of the diamond anvil cell and the diffraction is collected on the other side uh, of the diamond anvil cell. Another geometry is uh, shown in the middle, uh, is a transverse or radial mode uh, in which the incident beam and the diffracted beam are on the same side of the cell. In this particular case, very wide uh, lateral opening diamond anvil cells, the so-called panoramic ducts, for example, are required. There is also the choice of particular type of gaskets, often beryllium, as this later, this gasket needs also to be transparent. The third geometry is a, is a combination of the two previous modes, that is radial and uh, axial. So as newcomers to high pressure and X-ray, it is important to keep in mind some of the challenges you will be facing. But as the saying goes, no mountain too high and no ocean too deep. So the sample first, the sample will be very small, typically tens of microns. Uh, I would refer back to the table of typical sizes I uh, showed earlier in my presentation. 
the Angular access, something which effectively Pierre touched upon uh, during his presentation, will be restricted due to the geometry of, of the diamond and veil or the diamond and veil cell itself. Although recent developments, notably by our company, have developed uh, uh, and have enabled some apertures up to 120 degrees. Absorption by the diamond can be also a limiting factor. Contamination of the image, particularly for powder diffraction by the pressure medium. Uh, Ross might say something on that later on. Possibly the gasket, the diamonds. All this can be solved uh, to a certain extent by uh, diffraction analysis software as presented, I think, later on by Ross, Jacob, and, and Helena following my, my presentations. So when starting from a standard diffractometer, the, the dimensions and weights of the DAC can mean, as we've experienced uh, yesterday with, with Pierre, that um, certain components will need to be adapted. The manufacturing of your diffractometer will be aware of that and can give you some advice on which components to look at. The, the, the typical components which will be looked at are a beam condenser, often needing to be shorter, uh, a beam stopper, often needing to be extended to allow for the larger footprint of, of the diamond and cell, a special holder for the DAC, uh, for example, like on this picture around the DAC, or to support the DAC on, on the goniometer. There will be some examples later on. Uh, but here, effectively, this picture summarizes some of these uh, custom made uh, components. In this slide, I want to show an example of us working hand in hand with Rigaku in Poland to design a new high temperature and high pressure diamond and cell for the supernova diffractometer from Rigaku. What you can see on this uh, slide, the modeling work which uh, has been done prior to production to capture all possible interferences and clashes and collision with the DAC. On our side, we had to work on uh, the shape and the dimensions of the diamond and cells uh, to find a compromise with a sphere of safety with a different for the diffractometer. Rigaku worked on special beam condensers, stoppers, as well as reinforced goniometers, as we can see on the right hand side, uh, to withstand the weight of the pressure cell. We have got a, a small video of. Um, the brag which uh, Pierre showed yesterday, a more recent version with uh, Connie Colombus. Um, this video is a courtesy of um, Giovanni Ern at Johannesburg University in, in South Africa and, and shows the example of, uh, of this uh, DAC uh, on a four axis goniometer from uh, Booker, not to, not to name it. So here, effectively, we see that the different parameters which uh, Pierre um, went uh, and explained to us yesterday have been set up to avoid any collision uh, between the beam stopper uh, and the beam condenser. So now we come to the very important question of which DAC for me um, and how to choose your diamond and cell. Um, it was, I think, mentioned en passant by uh, James yesterday that effectively that can be a difficult choice for, for newcomers. Um, so this table is an extract of our company website uh, in which uh, we have organized our different diamond and veil cells um, specific to extra application according to two main parameters. Uh, first, the pressure range or choose your pressure range. Uh, as defined as high pressure up to 30 GPA and very high to ultra high pressure for pressure above 50 up to 90 GPA and above. The temperature range also is important if you want to do some low, some room or high temperature experiment. So you need to choose effectively your pressure range and your um, temperature range. Uh, you can find more details on our, on our company website. But then you can see that on this metrics, effectively, the different diamond and cells uh, are, are classified on this uh, two by two matrix or two by three matrix. So the key questions you, you need to ask yourselves are, uh, you know, what's the, the maximum pressure you will need for your experiment first? Um, no need to do some you know, very small culettes if you don't need them. That's effectively the, the, the first question. What is the collection angle of, uh, of the cell you will need for your experiment? 
Then what is the temperature range you are looking at? Are you planning to cool down the cell? Are you planning to do a high temperature experiment? Then uh, the, the question of the pressure mechanism you require. Typically, screws type cell mean that uh, you have to remove the duct uh, from the goniometer to change the pressure most of the time. Um, the gas membrane DAC means that if you have the advantage, you can change the pressure whilst on the goniometer. Uh, another question is, do you have some space or, or weight limitation? And then, and not uh, also importantly, is what was your budget? Are you looking more for a budget DAC or a more advanced one? Uh, finally, are you experienced with high pressure techniques? And this is often this uh, question which are the starting point of, of my discussion with, uh, with our customers. So earlier in my presentation, uh, we've seen that effectively one needs to apply a certain force at the back of, of the diamond and bill. In our jargon, we call it the choice of a pressure mechanism. I show you some typical examples of such pressure mechanism used in our diamond and bill cells. The first one um, is a screw driven cell on the top left. It is a very traditional cell. It is more economical, but has a disadvantage that one might need to, to remove it from the goniometer uh, to vary the pressure. An alternative is the one below, which are a gas membrane cell in which a gas is used to inflate a diaphragm inside the cell, which in turn generates a force on the diamond anvil mounted on the piston. In this case, you can keep the DAC onto the goniometer, but it comes at a higher price and more equipment as you need to have a, a gas bottle, a regulator, and a gas controller. The examples on the, on the right hand side are original design done by our company, either internally or for collaboration. The opposing plates of the plate DAC works on the principle of three pins bound, which are keeping the top and um, uh, bottom plates apart. Via a gearbox, which we uh, can see on the top, uh, it's rotating simultaneously the three clamping screws and the plates are deflected, uh, bringing the two diamonds into, into the middle closer to one another to increase the pressure. On the bottom right, we see the turnbuckle cell, which is an original design uh, by Dr. Stan Tozer at the University of uh, Florida and commercialized uh, uh, exclusively uh, through a license by Almax Zilam. In this design, the diamonds are mounted on two screwable bolts and the pressure is increased by rotating the central body uh, of the cell, which in turn brings the anvils toward one another. I would like now to show a few examples of uh, diamond anvil cells mounted on various commercial de facto methods. I have to warn that effectively they are not all from uh, Rigaku Corporation. Uh, I will browse sorry, for, for this example as function of temperature from room temperature to low temperature and to complete the picture by uh, the high temperature DAX. So let's start with the, the room temperature DAX uh, and more specifically the Bragg Mini, which is really ideal for, for moderate pressure, typically 20 to 30 GPM. It is a, a very good entry level product, particularly for inexperienced users. Still, it offers a wide aperture of uh, 85 uh, degrees, very, very easy to use, very easy mounting on the goniometer head with a purpose made holder uh, suitable for one eighth of an inch mounting pin or in our good old money of uh, metric sizes, 3.17 millimeter. I really tend to suggest this uh, as an option to new users uh, coming into the field of high pressure. Then comes a plate DAC, which uh, has a similar characteristic in terms of uh, diffraction cone, but is a slightly larger cell giving the advantage of, of reaching higher pressure, well above 100 GPA with a great level of stability. Although suitable to be used on, on laboratory X-ray diffractometer, we often find this uh, cell as well at, uh, at uh, synchrotrons on, on beamlines such as uh, APS in the USA or DESI in Germany or, or ESRF in, uh, in France. Now this cell is my, uh, is my favorite. Um, because it's very special as it offers the, really the largest diffraction cone available on the market with a very impressive 120 degrees aperture. We managed to achieve that by making the best use of our, of our diamond polishing capabilities and polishing and design capabilities by making a diamond which is at the same time uh, very wide, it's four millimeter wide, 
and very small in height of 1.2 millimeter in height. So this combination is unique and gives this uh, large aperture of 120 degrees, making this uh, cell particularly suited for uh, X-ray diffraction at pressure below 50 GP. Let's move on to some examples of tax used for low temperature extra experiments. The very compact and robust design of this uh, cell uh, in Tozodax should not fool you as uh, the, the mechanical and, and pressure performances of these tax are really very impressive. With a tiny diameter of uh, 12 millimeter and a height of uh, 11 millimeter, one can still achieve some pressure well above 20 GPA in this super lightweight DAC for the goniometer. It has been specifically designed to be used in conjunction with um, cryostream type nozzle cryostats, such as a well-known cryo, uh, cryo check. Uh, temperature as uh, low as 90 K have been achieved uh, with such setup. It is important to uh, know that effectively this is, this is not really an entry level product, both in terms of budget, because you need a cell, you need a, a loading jig, you need a press, but also in terms of, uh, of experience to use it, um, because effectively this turnbuckle principle is, is a bit um, uh, non-standard. <coughs> so this video is, uh, is courtesy of uh, Julian Haynes at uh, Montpellier University in France, and show the example of this uh, tozer back motion on um, on on. Um, on a four axis goniometer from, from Brooker. So he can see the advantage compared to the previous uh, video of this very small cell where collimator, uh, stopper, cryojet are very close to one another. Even the detector is, is very close to, to this cell. So on the other side of, of the scale spectrum, uh, we find our so-called um, CCS uh, DAC. Uh, this is a combined system in which there is a gas membrane DAC, the, the Bragg LTG, mounted uh, on a Janis uh, lecture cryostat. Here we see on this picture uh, an example of an installation which we have carried out at the National Chao Tung University in Sinshu in, uh, in Taiwan for the collaboration with our company and, and my research in, in Germany. The cryostat being a cryocooler can be used uh, both origin or, sorry, horizontally or vertically. And in this setup, the cryostat was mounted horizontally in front of, uh, of the beam condens condenser, which is on, on the left hand side of the picture. The cryostat uh, has also some optical windows suitable for X ray. In the position shown in the picture, the optical Ruby system, which is of the previous generation, which is a black box you can see. Uh, is measuring the pressure inside the cell at low temperature. The detector on the right hand side is behind the optical ruby lux system and can be brought closer once the ruby lux is removed from its, um, of its uh, stage. I would like to finish my presentation with a DAC for high temperature application. In particular, I would like to show you our recent development made in collaboration with uh, Rigaku Europe in Poland the University of Warsaw. This is a high temperature system, which I mentioned to you before, um, where effectively we had to develop a DAC for, for very high specs in terms of thermal properties, thermal performances, and mechanical performances in the smallest footprint possible. The image on the top right shows this Helios DAC Plus, which can achieve pressure above 50 GPM, mainly limited by the size of the beam, and temperature up to 900 degrees Celsius. The system is now being set up at the university as we speak, and we hope to have some more results to show in, uh, in September. So such uh, cells can also be mounted on other diffractometers as shown in these uh, pictures in this example. Uh, here is an example of a Malvern analytical system, Empyrean, namely the Empyrean system. In this case, uh, temperatures of up to 1000 degrees Celsius are achieved by the mean of internal heater and ceramic insulation part inside the cell. This provides a big advantage of compactness, compactness sorry, as well as thermal efficiency, as the temperature on the outside of the cell remains below 300 degrees Celsius when the inside of the DAC is glowing and we can really see the inside of the cell glowing 
at 1000 degrees Celsius. The picture shows that the DAC is connected to the power supply, uh, driving the heater, the gas line to circulate some uh, inert gas, and the capillary line to vary the pressure onto the goniometer. We can also see uh, the Ruby Lux, uh, the aluminum box which you see behind the cell, uh, which is a latest generation, very compact optical system to measure the pressure. So uh, our company has also developed some uh, proprietary LabVIEW-based software to control the pressure and the temperature in, in our diamond and cells. In particular, uh, the top screenshot shows you uh, our high pressure manager enabling the pressure control of the DAC, uh, observation of the sample space and the gasket, uh, and the Ruby pressure measurement and calibration uh, live. The other software, which is the other screenshot at the bottom, um, enables temperature control of the internal heaters of our diamond and vil cells via a PID loop between the, the temperature reader and the power supply. It is important to finally to, to conclude my, my talk. It's, it's important to bear in mind that each experiment is different with its own specificities and constraints. I hope this presentation has a giving you the, the interest to try high pressure for your research. I also hope that the next step for you will be to consult our website for a selection of our diamond and cells and the related products. The important message I want to leave you with is that uh, we are here to accompany and guide you in your choice. Uh, so do not hesitate to, to consult us directly. Our technical team will be happy to, to discuss your, your requirements and constraints in order to help you to identify the best solution for you. Uh, we are available on, on email, uh, phone, or video meetings uh, if needs be. Finally, to, uh, to finish my um, presentation, uh, I would like to, to, to thank my, uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Christophe Guillaume, who uh, very thankfully uh, helped me to prepare most of this presentation. Uh, Christophe has a, has a PhD obtained at the University of, uh, of Edinburgh and is a specialist in high to uh, ultra high pressure with many years of experience in, uh, in optical spectroscopy um, in and also X-ray diffraction experiments, uh, in particular at synchrotron beam lines in Europe but also the, the USA. So that's the end of my talk and hopefully we might have enough time for, for a few questions if, uh, if any. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Christoph. So uh, we don't have any questions from the audience, but I do have a few questions of my own for you. So uh, the first I've question... Got, I've got my, my Joker card. If it's too difficult, <laughs> I, can, I can drag Christoph. No, no, don't worry. They're not difficult. Uh, the first question is that uh, I'd like to push you um, to assume that I am a chemical crystallographer and I have never done high pressure research and I have no special requirements other than that I want to do high pressure research which of your products would you tell me to buy? Which cell, which high pressure cell? So having this background information, I would ask effectively you, you know, what's the typical pressure range you need? And I suspect that based on what you told me is going to be very low, relatively low pressure, right. five, 10 GPM. Um, I would really definitely guide you toward the, the Bragg Mini. It's a very simple cell to use. Um, you know, we've, we've made some design features on this cell, which is uh, making it still quite stable, uh, unlike what has been mentioned yesterday. It's, it can be a very stable cell for this type of, uh, of pressure range. Really, that's, uh, it's, uh, it's an entry level in terms of uh, price uh, range and also in terms of ease of, of use and mount. Okay, so for the record, my, my personal experience was that uh, 5 GPA was about the upper limit of useful experimentation with high pressure on a single crystal instrument. Mm -hmm. um, the second question I have was uh, that, so I, these days you can buy pre-indented gaskets. Mm -hmm. um, when I was doing high pressure research in, in Edinburgh, um, we were always indenting the gaskets ourselves with the diamonds. I'll hold on, hold your, hold your horse. I'll pass on the, the, the I know the question which is coming, so I'll pass it on to my colleague, uh, Christophe. Hi, can you hear um, me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Thank you. So, so my question was, uh, now, now you can buy indented, pre-indented gaskets for high pressure research. Uh, when I was doing high pressure research, we always indented the gaskets ourselves. Yes. So my question to you is, uh, why would you do one or the other? What was the ben benefit of doing it yourself? And what's the benefit of doing it with pre-indented? Well, it all depends how many experiments you are doing. I mean, uh, I think you were working in Edinburgh like I was before, and uh, we were preparing like lots and lots of uh, diamond anvil cells for synchrotron experiments, which uh, are very fast and uh, efficient, and, uh, and you need a lot of samples. So if you need to prepare, let's say, uh, 50 gaskets in uh, three weeks, that's going to be costly if you, you need to buy them. If you prepare them yourself, you are more efficient and uh, it's, it's cheaper, you see? Mm -hmm. But if you do, let's say, uh, five uh, experiments uh, from time to time, because they are long experiments, you have to consider that as well. Some people just use one gasket, and uh, especially for single crystal. Sometimes you have a very good quality single crystal, and you need a lot of measurements before you have your complete analysis. So in that case, I mean, it's all relative on how many gaskets you need. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Keep um, going. You're doing well. Keep going. <laughs> so I have I have one last comment for for Chris. I, I, okay. Back, pass back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a hand. He's a brain. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there was one comment that I had about your presentation. You have a video that you showed, which was labeled as a Brooker diffractometer. And actually, that was an OD Oxford diffraction diffractometer. Uh, so I just wanted to, to make that clear. And maybe you can update your presentation for the future. I certainly will. Uh, so thank you very much. Much appreciated. Uh, thank you. My for pleasure. My pleasure.